Today we're going to look at the surface areas and volumes of spheres. We've been looking at surface area and volume of other figures such as prisms and pyramids and cones and those things. Today we're looking at um, the sphere which we would recognize as uh, the shape of a ball. So a sphere is the set of all points in space that's equidistant from a given point, the center. The radius is a segment with one endpoint on the center and one endpoint on the sphere. The diameter would be a segment that passes through the center of the sphere and has both endpoints on the sphere. So we have a picture here so that you can see the, the cross sections that come with it. Now, um, if a plane is intersecting the sphere here in more than one point, then it's going to have a cross section that's just a circle. Okay, if that circle um, happens to be also the center of the sphere, like would happen in this part, um, then it's called the great circle. Okay, the great circle would have um, the circumference of it would be the circumference of the sphere. So those would be the same. And then it also cuts the sphere into segments or into pieces that are called hemispheres. Okay, um, a baseball is a good model of a sphere, and if we took the cover off of the baseball and opened it up, uh, we would come up. We could come up with a formula for a sphere, and, and it, I have the a, a picture here. Um, you know, a baseball has two pieces to the cover, and so each one of these is sort of a circle, and they're they're coming close to touching each other. We don't have the circles drawn in, but the radius of this of each of those is the same. And so if I found the area of just one of those little circular pieces, it would be pi r squared, but there are four of them. So remember, surface area is the, uh, on a prism or a pyramid or a cone, is the lateral area plus the area of the bases. But in this case, we have just a circular object. So the cover of the baseball is a good way to see where they come up with the surface area of the sphere in theorem 1110. So anytime we're finding the surface area of the sphere, we're just going to multiply four times pi times the radius squared. Now, um, one thing that you need to pay attention to when, when you're given problems is uh, whether or not you're given the radius or the diameter. So the radius of a sphere is half the diameter of a sphere. So anytime um, I'm given the diameter, I need to divide it by two before I start plugging into the formula. So that's what's uh, given to us in, in example one. We're going to find the surface area of this sphere that has a diameter of 8 meters. So the first thing I need to do is realize that the radius is 8 divided by 2, which is just 4. And then I just need to use the formula. So it would be 4 times pi times the radius, which is 4 squared. That's going to give me 4 times pi times 16, which is 64 pi. Now my units, because I'm talking about area, will be whatever the units of the radius were squared, in this case meters squared. Sometimes they'll ask me to give my um, answer in terms of pi. Sometimes they'll ask me to round it to the nearest tenth. So um, here I have 64 pi. If I wanted to round that to the nearest tenth, I would just multiply it on my calculator and I would get approximately 201 Well, my pen didn't write correctly that time. Point 0.1 meters squared. So pay attention to how they ask for the answer as well. Okay, here's quick check one. Um, I want you to pause and see if you can work this out. Uh, you're finding the area of a sphere with diameter 14 inches and I want you to give your answer in terms of pi. Okay, hopefully you paused and worked this out. Since I have a diameter of 14 inches, the first thing I need to do is divide by 2 to find the radius, which will give me 7, a 7 inch radius. Then I can just plug into the surface area formula. So it's going to be 4 times pi times 7 squared which will end up being 4 
times pi times 49. And 4 times 49 is 196 pi. Now pay attention to units. The radius was given in inches, so my units for the surface area will be inches squared or square inches. And I'm leaving my answer in terms of pi because they asked me to do that. Okay, the other part of this section talks about um, finding the volume of a sphere. So uh, there's a picture in your book that gives an example of how they came up with the model for that. But I'm just going to go straight to the theorem. Theorem 1111 says the volume of the sphere is equal to 4 thirds times pi times a radius cubed. So this time we're going to, which makes sense, volume is in cubic units. So we're going to be cubing the radius. And again, if you're given diameter, make sure that you half the diameter before you start plugging it in. This one was given to us. Uh, and the actual radius was given to us, so we don't have to do the other part first. So I would just be plugging it in. So volume would be 4 thirds times pi times 6 cubed. And I'm just going to put this in on my calculator. So I'm going to do 6 cubed. That's 216. So I'm going to have 4 thirds times pi times 216. So in your calculator, the easiest way to put it in is to go ahead and multiply the 216 by 4 and then times pi. And then whatever that number is that you get, divide it by 3. So that's going to give me, I'm going to round it to the nearest tenth, approximately 904. Let me make it look more like a zero. I'm going to round to the nearest tenth, so it's 0.77, but I'm going to round up to 0.8. And my units will be cubic units, so since my radius is in meters, it will be meters cubed. Now, try this practice problem. Find the volume of a sphere with a diameter of 60 centimeters to the nearest tenth. We could have noted that we could have left our answer in terms of pi by multiplying 216 times 4 and then dividing by 3, but leaving pi in our answer. So um, you can do that, but in this practice problem, you're asked to do it to the nearest tenth. So pause and try that problem. Okay, hopefully you saw that we were given that diameter instead of the radius, so my radius will be 60 divided by 2. So it's going to be 30 centimeters. is not wanting to write today. The eraser likes to work well. 30 centimeters. Okay, now I'm going to plug that into the formula. So volume is equal to 4 thirds pi times 30 cubed. Now, some of you might think you want to simplify by canceling the 3 with the 30, but you cannot do that before you cube it. So just go ahead and you, you always do exponents first. Um, so we're going to do that first. 30 cubed will be 27,000. So I'm going to have 27,000 times 4. That's 108,000, and then times pi. Well, let's go ahead and divide by 3 this time. Divided by 3 is 36,000 pi um, So that's what my answer would look like if I was going to give it in terms of pi. But I'm not, so now I'm going to multiply that 36,000 times pi in my calculator. And I'm going to get 113,000. 97 point, it says 3355, so the 3 is going to round, stay at a 3, round down. 
and then that's 0.3 and then the units are centimeters so I'll have cubic centimeters or centimeters cubed. Finally, we're given an example of how we might use know the volume of a sphere and then they might ask us to find it, the surface area of that same sphere. So if we're going to do that, what we, we so we're given volume is equal to 5,000 cubic meters. Now, I'm not going to write down the units at this point, but what I need to do is I need to think about that that is going to be equal to the formula for volume. So if I want to be able to find the surface area of the same sphere, I need to find the radius. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Because that's all I really need um, in order to be able to find the surface area. So if I know that 5,000 has to equal 4 thirds times pi r cubed, then I have a way that I can figure out what r is. All right. This is called, um, well, this is not called it. Sometimes we have a, what's called a literal equation where we might still have the v and we need to rearrange it. But this time, uh, we, we have numbers and only the r. So I'm going to try to get um, the r by itself or the r cubed by itself first. In order to do that, I need to multiply by, by the reciprocal of 4 thirds on both sides. So 3 over 4 multiplied on both sides. All right, on the right side, uh, it's going to do exactly what I'm wanting and make numerator and denominator will cancel and leave me with just pi r cubed. Okay, on the other side, I'm going to have 3 times 5,000 divided by 4. It turns out to be 3,750. Now I'm close. I need to get the r cubed by itself. So I'm going to divide by pi on both sides. Now on your calculator, I want you to keep this in once you do it. So you're going to have 3750 divided by pi. That's going to give us, um, it's a decimal, it's going to be an approximation, but about 1,193.66. Okay, that's what r cubed is going to equal. I'm going to leave it written as 3,750 over pi because depending on how you enter things in your calculator, um, on my scientific one I can just take the cube root of what's already shown up on my screen. But if you're entering this on a uh, graphing calculator, you're going to need to put the cube root of this part um, as you do it all together. So I'm going to be taking the cube root if r cubed is equal to that, then if I take the cube root of it, it should tell me what r is equal to. So I'm going to get r is equal to 10.607. I'm just going to leave it as 10.6. Now, um, when I say cube root, that's the one that looks like this, in case you've forgotten. Okay, there's a, it's a radical sign, but it has a 3 in the left corner. Okay, once we find R, now I can find the surface area by using the other formula. So the surface area is 4 times pi times the radius squared. All right, so that's going to equal 4 times pi times 10.6 squared. All right, 10.6 squared is about 112.36 times 4 is equal to 449.44 and then times pi is going to end up giving me 1,411.95, which means really I would round that up to let me erase this part. Instead of 1.195, 1, 1 I can't round the 9, I have to round the 9 up. So that would give me 1412.0. I'll put the point 0 because 
it shows that I have rounded to the nearest tenth, that it just happened to round up. So I do want to include that point zero. My units would be in, uh, since the volume was in cubic meters, my surface area will be in square meters. So if you're given the volume, you need to find the radius, so then you can use it for the surface area. You could also have the surface area and use the other formula to find the radius and then find the volume as well. Okay, try out the assigned problems and let me know if you need some help.